Hi, it's Fiona Masterson from the Learning Reservoir and in this video I'm going to take you through what ISO 22000-2018 is. Well, what is it? Well, it is an ISO international standard created by the International Standards Organization and it is a food safety management standard and it is a standard that is applicable to anyone who is involved in the production of food along the food chain from the farmer all the way up through uh, to the retailer, um, to restaurants and so on. So any businesses that are involved in the food chain of food can implement this standard in order to, uh, to establish a food safety management system in their organization. When you talk about a food safety management system, in essence, you're talking about controlling food safety hazards. You don't want um, potential hazards getting into your product. You don't want broken glass get into your product. You don't want microbial growth that could produce dangerous food uh, toxins that could be fatal to a consumer. So that's the fundamental essence of a food safety management system. You don't want food safety hazards. You want to um, involve with your product. You need to control them. And therefore you have to put a system in place to control them. Um, and ISO has written the standard which would be a best practice methodology and how to control that, how to control food safety hazards. And the requirements within ISO 22000 are the, are the steps of how to set up a robust food safety management system to control those food safety hazards. The standard contains 10 clauses. So let's have a look at the standard. At the beginning of the standard, we have the introduction section. Here we have a forward introduction to the standard, Clause 1 covers the scope of the standard. Clause 2 covers the normative references. This is where other standards are listed that you would use when you're implementing ISO 22000, for example. The quality management standard, ISO standard ISO 9001 is referred to. Um, the uh, testing and calibration uh, laboratory standard, ISO 17025 is also um, referenced here because you might utilize those standards when you're implementing a food safety management system because the ISO 9001 standard is a quality management system standard and obviously when you're dealing with um, laboratory testing of food products that laboratory would adhere to ISO 17025, the Testing and Calibration Laboratory Standard. And then Clause 3 covers terms and definitions that are used within the standard. But the major clauses for implementing a food safety management system are found in Clauses 4 to 10. And in Clause 8, it covers the HACCP principles. HACCP stands for Hazard Analysis Critic Control Point. And we also have a video in our channel that describes exactly what HACCP principles are. Basically, it's a methodology uh, of risk assessment when you're looking at food to determine are there any potential hazards in it and how you would control them um, and prevent from that from occurring. That's what a short um, description of what HACCP is, but please have a look at our video to get more detail. So the first clause we'll look at is clause four which is the context of the organization and this clause what you're looking at here is what's your scope of your food safety management system so if you're a dairy for example well are you um uh, what does that entail exactly do you get the milk into your dairy is it there already do you own the trucks that the pro the milk is sent out on um is it if you have a packaging line in your dairy. So where where does it stop your food safety management system? Does it stop when you load the milk onto the trucks or do you still own the milk when it's put on the shelves in the supermarket? So what is the scope of your food safety management system? You have to understand your organization. You have to, and clause four wants you to think about your organization and the context of the organization. What type of food safety management system do you need to have put in place. Who are the stakeholders involved in your organization? Things like that need to be considered. Clause four, five looks at leadership. So important in quality management that the leaders buy into the whole area of 
quality and food safety management for this clause. So hence we have a clause around leadership. Here we they want you to ha, your leaders to ha, demonstrate commitment to food safety from the top management. They have to establish a food safety policy and ob objectives. They have to be communicate that food safety policy. So a food safety policy is where leaders and organization write a policy describing their view on food safety, their the ethos regarding food safety for that particular organization, and then communicate it to all employees so they understand that lead the leadership take food safety important in that organization. Clause six covers planning. So you have to plan to succeed in, in all things really, in all projects. And when you're designing a food safety management system, you have to plan. So you have to determine what are the potential uh, issues you could have around food safety. You have to develop plans. You have to address risks. What are the opportunities as well to prevent food safety issues from occurring? What are your food safety objectives for your organization? And what happens if there's changes? So, for example, in that dairy, if you go with a, a different truck company to take your produce to the supermarket, well, what will you do then? How will you control that particular supplier? So how do you plan for changes? That's all required under Clause 6. In Clause 7, it talks about support. So you have to have the right resources in place. You have to have the right staff in place to have a, a good food safety management system. You uh, have to ensure that people are aware and they're trained uh, around food safety. They have the proper training, that they're competent to do their jobs regarding food safety. Have they attended HACCP training courses? Have they been mentored in the job to, to demonstrate the importance of their activities regarding food safety? For example, if you're in the dairy and you have to wear hair nets, do they know how to correct gowning procedures? Do they know that they need to put their, their hair net below their ear, that they can't wear earrings, they can't wear nerve varnish, things like that. Do you have trained systems like that set up? Now, there, I'm giving you examples because I'm talking about a dairy. It, the, the standard is not that descriptive, but it gives you generic guidance. But that those are the type of things you'll be looking at. Again, it all depends on the context of your organization, what type of training your staff would need. How do you uh, communicate um, to people outside your organization the importance of food safety how do you what are your communication with inside how do you document your your system then clause eight is our operations this is where we get stuck into our HACCP principles you have to work your way through the HACCP principles in order to be compliant with clause eight you have to establish prerequisites prerequisite programs is fundamental to a food safety management system you have to have that gowning that gowning process in the dairy that would be a prerequisite program that you have an established gowning process with gowning procedure you have a pest control program that would be in most food uh, um, food premises along that food chain you have to have pest control you have a housekeeping um program in place these are all prerequisites so in other words before you even go near your food safety hazards you have to have these strong prerequisite programs in place already and then you look at the potential food ha safety hazards that could be in your particular process you have to have an effective product traceability system that's so important you, if something goes wrong with your product can you trace trace that product all the way back to your premises do you know what was involved in making that product, what um, calibration devices were used in the production of that product and, and so on, what equipment was used. And clause nine looks at performance evaluation. Well, you set up your system, that's great, but you have to monitor it. it how are you going to monitor it? Uh, for example, your is it included in your internal audit program? Are you checking that your prerequisite programs are working? Are you checking that your suppliers are not having problems around food safety and so on? Are you carrying out management reviews to determine is your food safety management system effective? That's all covered under Clause 9. And cl Clause 10 is about improvement. So are you identifying opportunities for improvement based on performance data? So for example, 
even your internal audits, you're finding lots of problems around incorrect gowning procedures. Well, that's an opportunity for improvement. Make it better. Maybe the, the hair nets are ripping more frequently. Maybe you need a new supplier of hair nets, for example. Are you reviewing the data at your management reviews? Are you taking corrective actions if there's issues? All of those things need to be covered uh, in order to be in compliance, compliance with Clause 10 in ISO 22000. And it's so important. These, this ISO 22000 is a fantastic standard and benefits all, in, all organizations within that in the food industry. Why? Well, it, because it enhances food safety. It's a robust system. It improves risk management. It gives you global market access. If you're in Australia, if you're in um, Ireland, if you're in the US, if you're, you're in Poland, in the food industry, those people who work in those industries will know ISO 22000. It's a global standard. So if you implement it, it it'll give you access to uh, new customers. Customers trust it because it's an ISO standard, it's an internationally recognized standard. It can give you competitive advantage if you have it in, in place as well, because it's a very it'll help you design a robust food safety management system, and it brings in efficiencies and cost savings into your business because less things will go wrong from a food safety point of view if you design a robust food safety management system. And the philosophy of continuous improvement is something we all want in our businesses. And that concludes this video. I hope you found it beneficial. Please check out our channel for more food safety management and HACCP videos. Please give us a like if you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for similar content.